Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first Wednesdays in Wiedemann of 2020. Is that right? 2020. <laughs> this is a special concert dedicated to recently departed friends and family, a musical and memorial tribute. Servan de l'air Matthäus, Antoinette Schedecker, née Ribens, Paul Reed, Ernest Wayne Spriggs, and Sharon Schaub. May they rest in peace. But not just yet. We have to wait for the end of the recital. To bring light, love, faith, and prayer to those who are sick and who are in anguish or suffering. Two great composers today, Jean Langlais, with whom I studied in the 70s in Paris, and Johann Sebastian Bach. First, the Suite Medievale, Medieval Suite. Why did somebody call a, me a composition medieval in the 20th century? Well, it was wanting to find the Christian spirit through the use of Gregorian chant, and where else better to find it than when it was flourishing during the Middle Ages, uh, when it was a synonym of collective piety and individual contemplation. Other works with similar titles during the 20th century were Boelmann's Suite Gothique, or Gothic Suite, very popular, and Henri Mullet, uh, his Esquisse Byzantine, or Byzantine Sketches. Here we have a harmonic language that's constantly going between dissonance and consonance, and you will hear that immediately. Here we have a suite that is in, also in the form of a, of a low mass, meaning it could be used for the concert situation or liturgical it's playing for a mass. We first have the prelude, which is the majestic entry of the clergy at the beginning of the Mass with the evocation of the Asperges Me, or Thou wilt sprinkle me, O Lord. This is the ritual sprinkling of the congregation by the celebrant with holy water, symbolizing the cleansing of the people. Then the Tiento, which is uh, also the offertory, if one wants to play it during a Mass. A medieval form from the old 15th century Spanish or Portuguese genre, as such as a fantasy or a ricercari with imitative voices, such as in a fugue. And in the pedal, in the bass, you will hear another Gregorian chant, uh, the Kyrie, which is Lord have mercy, from the mass Fons Bonitatis, it's a mass that's used for solemn feast days. And then to end with the glorious acclamation, the acclamations sur le texte des acclamations carolingiennes, or on the text of the Carolingian acclamations. This goes back to the era of Charlemagne, when the emperor of the Romans in 800 AD adopted this hymn when returning triumphant from battle. And here, it's Christ, the emperor, and the hymn is now sung in the Catholic Church at solemn events. Christus vincit, Christus regnat, Christus imperat. Christ conquers, Christ reigns, Christ commands. And this is a theme that you will hear that is repeated over and over in this piece, such as a litany, Christus vincit, Christus vincit, you'll hear it there all the way through. Um, you'll hear also an imitation of the bells pealing way above us, giving us strength and force, repeating over and over again, giving us the strength to move along as well. Suite médiévale, prélude, tiento, and acclamation by Jean Langlais.
And now to Johann Sebastian Bach. This prelude and fugue in B minor is from his late mature period from Leipzig. And it's one of his greatest and most, most poignant, making extraordinary use of polyphony and the most gorgeous counterpoint ever used. Uh, the prelude is characterized by tightly woven 30-second notes, that means they go very fast, note scales, suspensions, dramatic octave pedal effects, tension building through repetition sequences, and appoggiatura harmonies with compelling first and second themes that you will recognize. The fugue subject is more serene and restrained. Uh, it's contrasted at first by just one counter subject, but the genius of Bach in the re-exposition of the fugue subject brings not only the first counter subject over the theme, but a second one. Maybe referring to the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They both contrast with the serene flowing nature of the subject itself. And in a magnificent amplification near the end, the fugue subject appears four times in a row, ending then, as in the prelude, in B major, where there's always hope. The common feeling here in these, uh, this wonderful prelude and fugue is one of lamentation and of prayer in serene suffering and the prelude being a sort of a metaphysical interrogation of the afterlife, and the fugue, the conquest of divine light through suffering. These are the words of my former professor at University of Michigan, Robert Clark. The great works of Bach, like the great liturgies or the dramas of Shakespeare, become increasingly meaningful through repeated experience and performance. For many of us, the tragic events of September 11th, 2001 in the United States have brought us back to the music of Bach as a towering witness of what is lasting and, and eternal in times of anguish. I hope that the listener may savor the depth, delight, and inspiration these great monuments of organ literature have to offer. Light, love, faith and prayer, remembering those who have just passed away. Prelude and Fugue in B minor, Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> 